I'm going to cut a sweatshirt out of all these panels from um, there were three sweatshirts that I took took apart and now I'm going to use my own pattern and recut using the panels and it will be a bit random because each panel is going to be a different size. I try to use up as much of the fabric as I can so we just not wasting any and these are the bits that are left over that I will use again for another sweatshirt anyway. But I do love the randomness of it like not knowing what size the fabric is. I have my design idea but each sweatshirt is completely unique and even I don't know what it's going to look like which I find quite exciting. I got into sustainable fashion after I had worked for the fast fashion industry. I used to be a designer for shops like Debenhams and things like that and there was a really fast turnover. The kind of customising trend came in, more of a trend than trying to be sustainable I guess. So I was ripping up jeans and things like that. And then I became a fashion blogger and then a journalist. And on one of the things I went on as a journalist, it was to a recycling place. The, the amount of waste that people were just throwing away, clothing, things from Primark, still with labels, ASOS, lots of vintage clothes. So there was just gems and basically a lot of it, would, a lot of it would have been recycled. A lot of it was sent abroad. I don't really know what was happening to it when it went there and loads of it went to landfill. They just saved what they could. It was just shocking because there was amazing clothes in there. I started really supporting sustainable makers. I really got into the whole sustainability thing and really wanted to get back into making. It was actually during lockdown when I couldn't get any fabric and I just decided that I would just use the fabric I had at home. I had loads of vintage fabric, loads of old clothes and just started taking them apart and remaking things out of them. So after I'd made these kind of uh, sweatshirts in lockdown, they became really popular and people were asking me to make them for them. And I had a couple in some shops in Bristol. Then I, I just realized it could really work. But I kind of, I, I was still working day jobs. I had two day jobs and doing this on the side. And then slowly it just became that I could do more and more. And now I just do it full time. Running a small business is so difficult because I am the designer, I am the admin person, I'm the finance person. I do absolutely everything from the social media to modelling. You know, the most sustainable thing for me to do is just wear it myself or put it some of my friends. I don't need to have flashy models, I don't need to run a massive studio. You have to sacrifice a lot and spend a lot of time. It takes a long time to build up customer base and a following. So it's it's slowly happening for me and I want my business to stay like that actually, rather than being this mass corporate business that um, is what I'm against. <laughs> Okay, so slow fashion and sustainable fashion are two different things and that's where it gets confusing. So slow fashion is when you source things locally, you know, like I have beanies and I source them locally, I have a local maker print them for me and then I go and get them on my bike. It's a slow way of working, a slow local way of working. Sustainable fashion is when you are reusing fabrics and materials that already exist. So you're creating like a circular economy. It also needs to be kind of local. You don't want your carbon footprint to be really big that you're hauling stuff in from other countries. You don't want workers being paid really low wages. Um, you know, so these are all things. If you do it locally, if you make it yourself or it's just a team of a few of you and you're paying your workers to do it, then that's sustainable. Really, as I've gone on, I've tried to just become sustainable, as sustainable as possible. 
My advice for starting off, if you want to become more sustainable, is firstly to stop following trends. I used to be an absolute dedicated follower of fashion, literally obsessed, because I was a fashion student as well, so I was jumping on every trend. The problem with trends is it makes people believe that they need to buy new clothes, and I need more clothes, and I need to, I need to fit in with this current trend, and you know, they're, they're obsessed. If you want to follow trends, try and use your own wardrobe <laughs> and buy things from charity shops and try and recreate stuff rather than having to buy the next big thing. Just open your mind a bit more to buying pre-loved. Loads of people now buy from Depop and Vinted and places like that, which is brilliant. My ethos is that you buy clothes until they, you know, they get old. If you're buying new clothes, maybe buy them sustainably or from an independent business. You also don't need to buy as many clothes. People go shopping as a habit, like what am I doing this weekend? I'm just gonna go into town and just buy something like I always do and I don't want it actually and I probably won't wear it. It's getting out of that habit and that mindset and then there won't be this massive need to mass produce so many clothes. You know, things should level out a bit so we can actually afford to pay workers that make your clothes so things aren't being shipped over quite so much for the, the climate, so clothes aren't being wasted, but so people can still afford to buy clothes. There has to be a middle ground somewhere, um, but the big, the big stop needs to be, the fast fashion industry needs to completely change.